Nursing home staff laid off because of vaccine mandates see a lifeline in pending state law, and state governments threaten Medicaid cuts as providers plead the opposite. This and more next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you are a CNA, consider attending our virtual march on Washington, April 7th. Registration is free and can be completed on our website at NACACNA.org. An attorney for 13 current and former employees of a county-owned nursing home is arguing the state's consideration of an anti-mandate vaccination law should get his clients their jobs back. Newly passed Wisconsin legislation backed by Republicans, as yet unsigned by Democratic Governor Tony Evers, would prevent employers from requiring the COVID-19 vaccine. Michael Anderson is representing Rock Haven Nursing Home, staff who disagree with the facility's policy and those who have already been laid off because of it. Unless the governor vetoes the, the law, Anderson told local media the new law should compel Rock County officials to end their policy and rehire anyone dismissed because they refuse vaccines. Lawmakers in almost two dozen states had introduced anti-mandate legislation by earlier this month. The bills, mostly backed by Republicans, would limit employers' ability to require coronavirus vaccines for their staff members. Some proposals even went so far as to propose limitations on the ability of workplaces to require any vaccines at all, potentially undoing decades of federally permitted rules that govern requirements for flu, hepatitis B vaccines among staff members at health healthcare facilities, including nursing homes. By mid-March, none of the proposals had passed and several already have failed, according to the Washington Post. Legal and insurance experts have said that vaccination mandates are likely to withstand legal challenges once the medicines move out from emergency use authorization and are approved for general use. Medicaid reimbursements for Florida nursing homes would drop nearly $81 million next fiscal year in a new budget proposal pitting state lawmakers against providers in a battle likely to take place in states across the U.S. in months ahead. A $42.1 billion spending plan unveiled last week in the Florida House includes a 2% cut to Medicaid funding for nursing homes. That would essentially reduce funding by about $125,000 per facility per year if approved, according to the Florida Healthcare Association. Association CEO Emmett Reed said in a statement that providers in the state are, quote, facing a significant economic crisis caused by the combination of increased costs related to the pandemic and chronic Medicaid underfunding. While we recognize that the legislature must make tough decisions this session, we don't believe the budget should be balanced on the backs of nursing center residents and their frontline caregivers who have already sacrificed so much over the past year, Reed added. A $42.3 billion budget proposal from state senators did not recommend Medicaid cuts for nursing homes. Providers across the country have been clamoring for increases in Medicaid reimbursement as a critical way to address staffing shortages in particular. But some now fear that support for state and local governments included in the latest relief package could actually undermine their efforts come budget time. New Hampshire's governor had proposed a flat funding for nursing home care in the next two-year budget that begins July 1st. The American Rescue Plan prohibits local governments from using federal funds to offset lost tax revenue or facilitate tax cuts, though legal challenges are already underway. In Pennsylvania, where the governor has denied a Medicaid increase for the seventh consecutive year, associations representing nursing homes are calling on leaders to reconsider the state of the industry. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.